transport aircraft are a critical component of modern transportation systems, enabling the movement of goods and people over long distances. In this article, we will explore the process of manufacturing different types of transport aircraft. Design and Engineering The process of manufacturing transport aircraft begins with design and engineering. Aircraft designers use computer-aided design, CAD, software to create three-dimensional models of the aircraft. The design must take into account factors such as aerodynamics, structural integrity, and fuel efficiency. Engineers work with the designers to ensure that the aircraft meets safety and performance standards. Materials and Components Once the design is finalized, the manufacturing process begins. Transport aircraft are typically constructed using lightweight materials such as aluminum, titanium, and composite materials. Components such as wings, fuselage, engines, and landing gear are manufactured separately and then assembled together. Manufacturing process The manufacturing process for transport aircraft involves a combination of automated and manual processes. Automated processes, such as 3D printing and robotic assembly, are used to manufacture components with high precision and consistency. Manual processes, such as riveting and welding, are used to assemble the components together. Quality control Quality control is a critical aspect of the manufacturing process for transport aircraft. Manufacturers use a range of techniques, including non-destructive testing and visual inspection, to ensure that the aircraft meets safety and performance standards. Quality control is performed throughout the manufacturing process, from the initial design to final assembly. Testing and certification. Once the aircraft is manufactured, it undergoes a series of tests to ensure that it meets safety and performance standards. These tests include ground tests, flight tests, and certification tests. Certification tests are performed by regulatory agencies to ensure that the aircraft meets all safety and performance requirements. Maintenance and service. Transport aircraft require regular maintenance and service to ensure safe and efficient operation. Manufacturers provide maintenance manuals and training for operators and technicians to ensure that the aircraft is properly maintained. Manufacturers also offer service and support to operators to ensure that the aircraft remains in optimal condition throughout its lifespan. Here are some additional aspects to consider about the process of manufacturing transport aircraft. Customization Transport aircraft can be customized to meet the specific needs of individual customers. Manufacturers offer a range of options for seating arrangements, cabin configurations, and cargo capacity to meet the needs of different markets and applications. Production rate The production rate for transport aircraft can vary depending on market demand and production capacity. Manufacturers must balance the need to meet customer demand with the need to ensure quality and safety standards are met. Supply chain, the manufacturing process for transport aircraft involves a complex global supply chain. Manufacturers must source materials and components from suppliers around the world and manage logistics to ensure that components arrive at the manufacturing site on time and in good condition. Environmental considerations, the manufacturing of transport aircraft can have significant environmental impacts, including energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and waste generation. 
manufacturers are increasingly focused on developing sustainable manufacturing processes and materials to reduce the environmental impact of aircraft production. Innovation, the manufacturing of transport aircraft is a highly innovative field. With manufacturers constantly developing new materials, technologies, and processes to improve safety, performance, and efficiency. Innovations in areas such as aerodynamics, propulsion systems, and materials science have enabled significant improvements in aircraft performance and fuel efficiency. Regulatory Compliance the manufacturing of transport aircraft is subject to a range of regulatory requirements, including safety and performance standards, environmental regulations, and export control regulations. Manufacturers must ensure compliance with these regulations to ensure safe and legal operation of their aircraft. Export control regulations are designed to prevent the proliferation of sensitive technologies and goods to unauthorized parties. Manufacturers of transport aircraft must comply with a range of export control regulations to ensure that their products do not fall into the wrong hands. Here are some ways that manufacturers ensure compliance with export control regulations. Awareness. Manufacturers must be aware of the export control regulations that apply to their products and understand the implications of non-compliance. This includes regulations related to exports of sensitive technologies, dual-use goods, and military equipment. Screening. Manufacturers must screen all potential customers and end-users to ensure that they are not on any restricted or denied party lists. This includes screening for individuals and entities associated with countries under sanctions or embargoes, as well as those associated with terrorist activities or proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Licensing. Manufacturers may need to obtain export licenses from the relevant government agencies before exporting their products. This process involves submitting an application detailing the product, the end user, and the destination country, along with other relevant information. The government agency will review the application and may impose conditions or restrictions on the export. Training Manufacturers must provide training to their employees on export control regulations and their responsibilities for compliance. This includes training on how to identify potential export control issues and how to report any suspicious activities or requests. Record keeping. Manufacturers must maintain accurate records of all export transactions, including documentation related to licensing, screening, and end use. These records help to demonstrate compliance with export control regulations and may be required for audits or investigations. Collaboration. Manufacturers may collaborate with government agencies and other industry stakeholders to share information and best practices related to export control compliance. This collaboration can help to identify new risks and improve compliance across the industry. In conclusion, manufacturers of transport aircraft must take a range of measures to ensure compliance with export control regulations. This includes awareness, screening, licensing, training, record keeping, and collaboration. Compliance with export control regulations is critical to ensuring the safe and legal operation of transport aircraft and preventing the proliferation of sensitive technologies and goods to unauthorized parties. Here are some additional aspects to consider about how manufacturers ensure compliance with export control regulations. Compliance programs, 
manufacturers may establish compliance programs to ensure that export control regulations are integrated into their operations. Compliance programs can include policies, procedures, and controls to help identify and manage potential export control issues. Luxury passenger aircraft are designed to provide a high-quality travel experience for passengers, with amenities such as spacious cabins, comfortable seating, and premium entertainment systems. In this article, we will explore the operational mechanisms of different types of luxury passenger aircraft. Design and Engineering The operation of luxury passenger aircraft begins with design and engineering. Aircraft designers use computer-aided design, CAD, software to create three-dimensional models of the aircraft. The design must take into account factors such as aerodynamics, structural integrity, and passenger comfort. Engineers work with the designers to ensure that the aircraft meets safety and performance standards. Materials and Components Once the design is finalized, the manufacturing process begins. Luxury passenger aircraft are typically constructed using lightweight materials such as aluminum, titanium, and composite materials. Components such as wings, fuselage, engines, and landing gear are manufactured separately and then assembled together. Manufacturing process. The manufacturing process for luxury passenger aircraft involves a combination of automated and manual processes. Automated processes, such as 3D printing and robotic assembly, are used to manufacture components with high precision and consistency. Manual processes, such as riveting and welding, are used to assemble the components together. Quality control. Quality control is a critical aspect of the manufacturing process for luxury passenger aircraft. Manufacturers use a range of techniques, including non-destructive testing and visual inspection, to ensure that the aircraft meets safety and performance standards. Quality control is performed throughout the manufacturing process, from the initial design to final assembly. Testing and certification. Once the aircraft is manufactured, it undergoes a series of tests to ensure that it meets safety and performance standards. These tests include ground tests, flight tests, and certification tests. Certification tests are performed by regulatory agencies to ensure that the aircraft meets all safety and performance requirements. Maintenance and service. Luxury passenger aircraft require regular maintenance and service to ensure safe and efficient operation. Manufacturers provide maintenance manuals and training for operators and technicians to ensure that the aircraft is properly maintained. Manufacturers also offer service and support to operators to ensure that the aircraft remains in optimal condition throughout its lifespan. Here are some additional aspects to consider about the operation of luxury passenger aircraft. Cabin design. The cabin design of luxury passenger aircraft is a critical aspect of the travel experience. Manufacturers work closely with airlines and designers to create cabin layouts that provide passengers with maximum comfort and convenience. This includes features such as live flat seats, personal entertainment systems, and advanced climate control systems. Catering and service. Luxury passenger aircraft typically offer high-end catering and service options to further enhance the travel experience. 
Airlines may partner with gourmet chefs and sommeliers to create dining and beverage menus that rival those of top restaurants. Flight attendants are trained to provide personalized service and attention to detail. Safety features Luxury passenger aircraft are designed with advanced safety features to ensure the safety of passengers and crew. This includes features such as emergency escape systems, fire suppression systems, and advanced avionics systems that provide real-time monitoring of critical systems. Environmental considerations. The operation of luxury passenger aircraft can have significant environmental impacts, including energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and noise pollution. Manufacturers are increasingly focused on developing sustainable aircraft designs and technologies to reduce the environmental impact of luxury air travel. Innovation The operation of luxury passenger aircraft is a highly innovative field. With manufacturers constantly developing new materials, technologies, and processes to improve safety, performance, and efficiency. Innovations in areas such as aerodynamics, propulsion systems, and materials science have enabled significant improvements in aircraft performance and fuel efficiency. Industry regulations. The operation of luxury passenger aircraft is subject to a range of industry regulations. Including safety and performance standards, environmental regulations, and customer service standards. Manufacturers and airlines must ensure compliance with these regulations to ensure safe and legal operation of their luxury aircraft. Here are some additional aspects to consider about the operation of luxury passenger aircraft. Market demand. The operation of luxury passenger aircraft is driven by market demand from high net worth individuals, corporate clients, and other premium passengers. Airlines must carefully analyze market trends and customer preferences to develop services and amenities that meet the needs of their target audience. Route planning. Luxury passenger aircraft are typically used on long-haul routes, where passengers are willing to pay a premium for a more comfortable travel experience. Airlines must carefully analyze route economics, including fuel costs, passenger demand, and competition, to determine the viability of using luxury aircraft on specific routes. Pricing Strategy The pricing strategy for luxury passenger aircraft is typically based on a combination of factors, including the cost of the aircraft, operating costs, and market demand. Airlines must carefully balance these factors to determine the optimal pricing strategy that maximizes revenue while remaining competitive in the market. Branding and marketing. The operation of luxury passenger aircraft requires strong branding and marketing to attract and retain high-end customers. Airlines must develop a strong brand identity that conveys luxury, exclusivity, and exceptional service. Marketing efforts may include targeted advertising, sponsorships, and partnerships with luxury brands. Customer experience. The customer experience is a critical aspect of the operation of luxury passenger aircraft. Airlines must provide a seamless and personalized experience for passengers, from booking to disembarking. This includes features such as dedicated check-in, priority boarding, and personalized service throughout the flight. Crew training. The operation of luxury passenger aircraft requires highly trained and skilled crew members, including pilots, flight attendants, and maintenance technicians. 
airlines must invest in ongoing training and development to ensure that their crew members are equipped to provide exceptional service and maintain the aircraft to the highest standards. Backslash. Here are some additional aspects to consider about the operation of luxury passenger aircraft. Technology The operation of luxury passenger aircraft relies on advanced technologies such as avionics systems, in flight entertainment systems, and connectivity solutions. Airlines must invest in the latest technologies to ensure that their aircraft are equipped with the most advanced and reliable systems. Partnerships The operation of luxury passenger aircraft often involves partnerships with other companies such as hotels, car rental companies, and tour operators. These partnerships can provide seamless travel experiences for passengers, including exclusive access to luxury hotels, transportation, and experiences. Security The operation of luxury passenger aircraft requires a high level of security to protect passengers, crew, and the aircraft itself. Airlines must implement robust security measures, including background checks for passengers and crew, security screening, and secure facilities for aircraft storage and maintenance. In the early days of aviation, passenger travel was an expensive luxury reserved for the wealthy few. In the early days of aviation, passenger travel was an expensive luxury reserved for the wealthy few. However, with the invention and development of more efficient and affordable aircraft, air travel has become accessible to the masses. Let's take a look at the process of how inexpensive passenger planes were invented. The first breakthrough in passenger air travel came in the form of the DC-3, which was introduced in the mid-1930s. The DC-3 was designed to be a reliable and efficient airplane that could carry passengers and cargo over long distances. It quickly became popular with airlines around the world and set the standard for modern airliners. In the 1950s and 1960s, the advent of jet engines led to the development of larger and faster passenger planes, such as the Boeing 707 and the Douglas DC-8. These aircraft were capable of flying further and faster than their predecessors, making air travel even more accessible to the general public. However, it wasn't until the 1970s that the concept of low-cost airlines began to take hold. Southwest Airlines, for example, was founded in 1967 and initially operated as an intrastate airline in Texas. By offering low fares and a no-frills service, Southwest quickly gained popularity and expanded its operations to other states. Other low-cost airlines, such as Ryanair and EasyJet, followed in Southwest's footsteps and began offering affordable flights throughout Europe in the 1990s. These airlines were able to keep costs low by using smaller, more fuel-efficient planes, and by cutting back on in-flight amenities like meals and entertainment. In recent years, the trend towards affordable air travel has continued, with airlines like Spirit and Frontier in the United States offering no-frills service and rock-bottom fares. These airlines often use Airbus A320S and Boeing 737s, which are smaller than the wide-body planes used by major airlines, but are more fuel-efficient and can be operated more cost-effectively. As mentioned earlier, the DC-3 was a significant milestone in passenger air travel, as it was the first plane designed specifically for transporting passengers. The DC-3 was capable of carrying up to 21 passengers, and its reliability and efficiency made it a popular choice for airlines. 
It was also the first airplane that could operate profitably without relying on government subsidies. The DC-3 was followed by other piston-engine aircraft, such as the Douglas DC-6 and the Lockheed Constellation, which were faster and more comfortable than their predecessors. However, they were still relatively expensive to operate and maintain, making air travel a luxury that was only accessible to the wealthy. In the 1950s and 1960s, the development of jet engines revolutionized air travel. Jet engines allowed planes to fly faster and at higher altitudes, making air travel more comfortable and efficient. The Boeing 707, which made its debut in 1958, was the first successful passenger jet and quickly became the standard for international air travel. The Douglas DC-8, which was introduced in 1959, was another popular jet-powered passenger plane. The DC-8 was designed to be a versatile aircraft that could be configured for both passenger and cargo transport. However, the high cost of operating these large and complex planes meant that air travel was still relatively expensive. It wasn't until the 1970s that the concept of low-cost airlines began to take hold. In the United States, Southwest Airlines was one of the first airlines to offer low fares and a no-frills service. By using smaller, more fuel-efficient planes like the Boeing 737, Southwest was able to keep its costs low and offer affordable air travel to a wider audience. In Europe, the low-cost airline model was pioneered by Ryanair and EasyJet in the 1990s. These airlines use smaller planes like the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320, which are more fuel-efficient and have lower operating costs than larger planes like the Boeing 747 or the Airbus A380. By cutting back on in-flight amenities like meals and entertainment, these airlines were able to keep fares low and attract budget-conscious travelers. Today, the trend towards affordable air travel has continued with airlines like Spirit and Frontier in the United States, and Ryanair and EasyJet in Europe. These airlines continue to use smaller, more fuel-efficient planes, and offer no-frills service to keep fares low. Another factor that has contributed to the development of inexpensive passenger planes is the use of new materials and manufacturing processes. For example, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner is made largely of composite materials, which are lighter and more durable than traditional materials like aluminum. This makes the 787 more fuel-efficient and less expensive to maintain than older planes. Another innovation that has helped to reduce the cost of air travel is the use of computer systems to optimize flight planning and scheduling. Airlines use sophisticated algorithms to determine the most efficient routes and schedules, which helps to reduce fuel consumption and increase profitability. In addition, the rise of low-cost carriers has forced traditional airlines to adopt new cost-saving measures in order to remain competitive. This has led to the introduction of basic economy fares, which offer fewer amenities than standard economy fares but are priced lower. Traditional airlines have also started to use smaller planes like the Airbus A319 or Boeing 737-700 to for shorter routes, which helps to reduce operating costs. Finally, advances in technology have made it easier for airlines to reach a wider audience and sell tickets directly to customers. Online booking systems and mobile apps have made it simple for passengers too. book flights and manage their travel plans, while social media platforms have allowed airlines to engage with customers and promote their services. 
Overall, the development of inexpensive passenger planes has been driven by a combination of technological innovation, changes in the airline industry, and consumer demand for affordable air travel. As airlines continue to explore new ways to reduce costs and improve efficiency, we can expect to see further advances in the design and operation of passenger planes in the future. After the success of the DC-3, other piston engine aircraft were developed and introduced in the following years. One notable example is the Lockheed Constellation, which made its debut in 1943. The Constellation was a larger and more luxurious plane than the DC-3, and it could carry up to 100 passengers on long-haul routes. The Constellation was a larger and more luxurious plane than the DC-3, and it could carry up to 100 passengers on long-haul routes. The Constellation featured a distinctive triple-tail design, which was both aerodynamically efficient and visually striking. The Constellation featured a distinctive triple-tail design, which was both aerodynamically efficient and visually striking. The plane was also equipped with advanced navigation and communication systems, which made it safer and more reliable than earlier planes. The plane was also equipped with advanced navigation and communication systems, which made it safer and more reliable than earlier planes. Another piston engine aircraft that was popular in the post DC 3 era was the Douglas DC 6, which was introduced in 1946. The DC-6 was a larger and faster plane than the DC-3, and it was capable of carrying up to 90 passengers. The DC-6 was also used for cargo transport, and it played a significant role in the post-World War II boom in air freight. The DC-6 was also used for cargo transport, and it played a significant role in the post-World War II boom in air freight. The history of aviation has been marked by the continuous development of aircraft. From the Wright brothers' first flight in 1903, the aviation industry has experienced tremendous growth and innovation, leading to the creation of faster, more efficient, and more comfortable planes. One of the most significant developments in aviation was the invention of medium-range passenger aircraft. Medium-range passenger aircraft are planes that are designed to fly between 2,400 to 5,400 kilometers. They can carry a significant number of passengers and cargo, making them an essential part of the commercial aviation industry. However, the invention of these planes was not an easy feat. It took years of research, development, and testing to create an aircraft that could fly long distances and carry large loads. The first medium-range passenger aircraft was the Boeing 707, which made its maiden flight in 1957. The 707 was the first jet-powered commercial airliner and quickly revolutionized air travel. It was faster, more comfortable and more fuel-efficient than previous planes. The 707 was also able to fly longer distances than previous planes, making it possible for airlines to offer non-stop flights between cities. Boeing's success with the 707 led to other aircraft manufacturers developing their own medium-range passenger planes. In 1960, Douglas Aircraft Company introduced the DC-8, which was similar in design and capability to the 707. The DC-8 was also a commercial success, with airlines purchasing over 550 units. In the 1970s, Airbus introduced the A300, a wide-body, 
twin-engine aircraft that could carry up to 266 passengers. The A300 was designed to compete with the 707 and DC-8 and quickly gained popularity among airlines. It was also the first aircraft to use composite materials in its construction, making it lighter and more fuel-efficient. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, aircraft manufacturers continued to refine and improve medium-range passenger planes. Boeing introduced the 757 and 767, while Airbus introduced the A310 and A320. These planes were all designed to be more fuel-efficient, with longer ranges and greater passenger capacity. Today, medium-range passenger planes are an essential part of the commercial aviation industry. They allow airlines to offer non-stop flights between cities, making travel faster and more convenient for passengers. They also enable airlines to transport large numbers of passengers and cargo, making air travel more affordable and accessible. In conclusion, the invention of medium-range passenger aircraft was a significant achievement in the history of aviation. It opened up new possibilities for air travel, making it faster, more comfortable, and more accessible. Today, medium-range passenger planes continue to evolve and improve, offering greater fuel efficiency, longer ranges, and more passenger capacity. In the 1970s, Airbus introduced the A300, which was a wide-body, twin-engine aircraft designed for medium-range travel. The A300 was the first aircraft designed and built by Airbus, a consortium of European aerospace manufacturers, and was intended to compete with the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8. The A300 had a seating capacity of up to 266 passengers and was designed with a wide fuselage to maximize passenger comfort. It was also the first commercial aircraft to use composite materials in its construction, which made it lighter and more fuel-efficient than previous aircraft. The A300 was a commercial success, with airlines purchasing over 250 units, it was also the beginning of Airbus's dominance in the aviation industry, as the company continued to innovate and produce successful aircraft. In the 1980s, Airbus introduced the A310, which was a shorter version of the A300. It had a seating capacity of up to 220 passengers and was designed for medium-range flights. The A310 was also the first aircraft to feature a two-crew glass cockpit, which improved pilot visibility and reduced the workload. In the 1990s, Airbus introduced the A320, which was a single-aisle aircraft designed for short to medium-range flights. The A320 was revolutionary in its design, as it featured fly-by-wire technology, which replaced traditional mechanical controls with an electronic system. This technology improved safety and reduced pilot workload, making the A321 one of the most successful aircraft in history. It was also the basis for the A318, A319, and A321, which were developed in the following years. Today, the A300 is no longer in production, but it remains an important part of aviation history. It paved the way for Airbus to become one of the largest aircraft manufacturers in the world, and its innovations have influenced aircraft design for decades. The Boeing 707 was the first medium-range passenger aircraft to be successfully introduced into commercial service. It was designed and built by Boeing in the 1950s, and it made its maiden flight in 1957. 
The 707 was a four-engine, narrow-body jet airliner, and it was the first commercial passenger plane to be powered by jet engines. The 707 had a range of up to 4,075 kilometers and a maximum seating capacity of 189 passengers. It was also designed to be faster, more comfortable, and more fuel efficient than previous commercial aircraft. The 707 quickly became popular with airlines, and it helped to revolutionize air travel in the 1960s. The 707 was used by many airlines around the world for both domestic and international flights. It allowed airlines to offer non-stop flights between cities, which was a significant improvement over previous aircraft. The 707 was also the first commercial aircraft to be equipped with a flight deck featuring electronic instrumentation and flight controls. Over the years, the 707 underwent several upgrades and improvements. In 1962, Boeing introduced the 707 to 320, which had a longer range and a greater seating capacity of up to 219 passengers. In the 1970s, the 707 was gradually phased out of commercial service as newer, more advanced aircraft, such as the Boeing 747 and the McDonnell Douglas DC-10, were introduced. Despite being retired from commercial service, the Boeing 707 remains an important part of aviation history. It was a significant step forward in the development of medium-range passenger aircraft, and it helped to usher in a new era of air travel. The 707 also served as a basis for the development of other successful aircraft, such as the Boeing 727 and the Boeing 737. Today, some 707s are still used for military and cargo transport purposes. The Boeing 707 was not only important for its technical advancements but also for its impact on the aviation industry. The 707 was a key factor in the growth of commercial air travel, as it allowed airlines to transport passengers and cargo more efficiently and at greater speeds. The introduction of the 707 paved the way for the development of other medium-range passenger aircraft and helped to establish the aviation industry as a major player in the global economy.
Small cargo planes play a crucial role in transporting goods to remote areas, especially where other means of transportation are unavailable or impractical. These aircraft are designed to carry smaller loads of cargo over shorter distances than their larger counterparts. In this article, we will take a closer look at how small cargo planes operate. Cessna Caravan The Cessna Caravan is a popular single-engine turboprop aircraft that is commonly used for cargo transportation. It has a range of approximately 2,000 kilometers and can carry up to 1,130 kilograms of cargo. The caravan has a large cargo door at the rear of the aircraft, which allows for easy loading and unloading of cargo. The cabin is spacious and can be configured to accommodate a variety of cargo types. Beechcraft King Air the Beechcraft King Air is another popular single-engine turboprop aircraft that is used for cargo transportation. It has a range of approximately 2,500 kilometers and can carry up to 907 kilograms of cargo. The King Air has a cargo door at the rear of the aircraft and a side cargo door, which provides multiple options for loading and unloading cargo. The cabin can be configured to accommodate a variety of cargo types, including oversized cargo. Pilatus PC-12 The Pilatus PC-12 is a single-engine turboprop aircraft that is often used for cargo transportation in remote areas. It has a range of approximately 3,440 kilometers and can carry up to 1,361 kilograms of cargo. The PC-12 has a large cargo door at the rear of the aircraft and a side cargo door, which provides multiple options for loading and unloading cargo. The cabin can be configured to accommodate a variety of cargo types, including oversized cargo. Cessna 208 Grand Caravan The Cessna 208 Grand Caravan is a larger version of the Cessna Caravan that is often used for cargo transportation. It has a range of approximately 2,000 kilometers and can carry up to 1,360 kilograms of cargo. The Grand Caravan has a large cargo door at the rear of the aircraft, which allows for easy loading and unloading of cargo. The cabin is spacious and can be configured to accommodate a variety of cargo types. The Cessna Caravan is a popular single-engine turboprop aircraft that is commonly used for cargo transportation. It has a length of 11.00 meters, a wingspan of 15.87 meters, and a height of 4.32 meters. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 3,311 kilograms and can carry up to 1,130 kilograms of cargo. The cargo compartment of the caravan is 3.15 meters long, 1.37 meters wide, and 1.32 meters high, providing ample space for a variety of cargo types. The aircraft has a large cargo door at the rear of the aircraft, which allows for easy loading and unloading of cargo. The cabin can be configured to accommodate up to nine passengers or a combination of passengers and cargo. The caravan is powered by a Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6A114A turboprop engine, which produces 675 horsepower. This gives the aircraft a cruising speed of approximately 333 km per hour and a maximum range of 2,000 km. The aircraft is equipped with advanced avionics and navigation systems, including a Garmin G1000 avionics suite and a satellite navigation system. It also has a comprehensive flight deck instrumentation system that provides the pilot with essential information about the aircraft's performance and systems. The caravan has been used for a wide range of cargo transportation applications, including transporting small packages, medical supplies, and other essential goods. The aircraft is also popular for use in remote areas, where it can be used to transport supplies to areas with limited access. One of the notable features of the caravan is its ability to operate from short and unimproved runways. 
This makes it an ideal choice for operations in remote areas or where other means of transportation are unavailable. In summary, the Cessna Caravan is a versatile and reliable aircraft that is popular for cargo transportation in remote areas. Its large cargo door, spacious cabin, and ability to operate from short and unimproved runways make it an ideal choice for transporting a variety of cargo types over shorter distances. The Beechcraft King Air is a popular twin-engine turboprop aircraft that is commonly used for cargo transportation. It has a length of 13.3 meters, a wingspan of 16.6 meters, and a height of 4.6 meters. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 6,010 kilograms and can carry up to 907 kilograms of cargo. The cargo compartment of the King Air is 3.35 meters long, 1.37 meters wide, and 1.32 meters high, providing ample space for a variety of cargo types. The aircraft has a cargo door at the rear of the aircraft and a side cargo door, which provides multiple options for loading and unloading cargo. The cabin can be configured to accommodate up to nine passengers or a combination of passengers and cargo. The King Air is powered by two Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6A68 turboprop engines, each of which produces 1,050 horsepower. This gives the aircraft a cruising speed of approximately 556 km per hour and a maximum range of 2,500 km. The aircraft is equipped with advanced avionics and navigation systems, including a Collins Pro-Line Fusion Avionics Suite and a satellite navigation system. It also has a comprehensive flight deck instrumentation system that provides the pilot with essential information about the aircraft's performance and systems. The King Air has been used for a wide range of cargo transportation applications, including transporting small packages, medical supplies, and other essential goods. The aircraft is also popular for use in remote areas, where it can be used to transport supplies to areas with limited access. One of the notable features of the King Air is its ability to operate from short and unimproved runways. This makes it an ideal choice for operations in remote areas or where other means of transportation are unavailable. Additionally, the aircraft can operate in a variety of weather conditions, making it a reliable choice for cargo transportation. The Pelidus PC-12 is a single-engine turboprop aircraft that is often used for cargo transportation in remote areas. It has a length of 14.4 meters, a wingspan of 16.3 meters, and a height of 4.3 meters. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 4,740 kilograms and can carry up to 1,361 kilograms of cargo. The cargo compartment of the PC-12 is 4.26 meters long, 1.27 meters wide, and 1.27 meters high, providing ample space for a variety of cargo types. The aircraft has a large cargo door at the rear of the aircraft and a side cargo door, which provides multiple options for loading and unloading cargo. The cabin can be configured to accommodate up to nine passengers or a combination of passengers and cargo. The PC-12 is powered by a Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6A67P turboprop engine, which produces 1,200 horsepower. This gives the aircraft a cruising speed of approximately 540 km per hour and a maximum range of 3,440 km. The aircraft is equipped with advanced avionics and navigation systems, including a Honeywell Primus Apex avionics suite and a satellite navigation system. It also has a comprehensive flight deck instrumentation system that provides the pilot with essential information about the aircraft's performance and systems. Air cargo plays a critical role in transporting goods across the globe. 
from delivering medical supplies to remote regions to shipping large equipment, air cargo helps keep the world running smoothly. To support this industry, specialized cargo aircraft have been developed to handle a wide range of cargo types, from perishable goods to heavy machinery. In this article, we will explore the process of manufacturing specialized cargo aircraft. The development of cargo aircraft has been a continuous process of adapting passenger planes for cargo transportation. In the early days of air cargo, passenger planes were retrofitted to carry cargo in the cabin or in the cargo hold. However, this approach limited the amount and type of cargo that could be transported. To address this limitation, cargo planes were designed with larger cargo holds and stronger floors to accommodate the weight of heavy cargo. These planes also have side loading doors, allowing for easy loading and unloading of large and bulky items. Furthermore, Cargo planes are equipped with specialized equipment such as rollers and conveyors to aid in loading and unloading cargo. The manufacturing process for cargo planes begins with designing the aircraft to meet the specific needs of the cargo being transported. This includes determining the maximum cargo weight and volume, as well as the types of cargo that will be transported. The cargo hold is then designed to accommodate the cargo, with the floor and walls reinforced to handle the weight and shape of the cargo. Once the design is finalized, the actual construction of the aircraft begins. The manufacturing process for cargo planes is similar to that of passenger planes, with the addition of specialized cargo equipment. The fuselage Wings, and tail sections are built separately and then assembled together. The cargo hold is also constructed separately and then attached to the fuselage. The floor and walls of the cargo hold are reinforced with strong materials such as titanium or carbon fiber to handle heavy cargo. The cargo door is installed and specialized equipment such as rollers and conveyors are added to aid in loading and unloading cargo. Once the aircraft is assembled, it undergoes rigorous testing to ensure that it meets safety and performance standards. This includes testing the cargo hold for strength and durability, as well as testing the loading and unloading equipment. In addition to the design and manufacturing process, there are several different types of cargo aircraft used for various types of cargo transportation. Here are some examples. Large cargo planes. These are the largest cargo planes in operation and are capable of carrying heavy and oversized cargo such as military equipment, vehicles, and aircraft engines. Examples include the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III and the Lockheed Martin C-5 Galaxy. Narrow-body cargo planes, these planes are smaller than large cargo planes and are typically used for transporting smaller cargo such as electronics and consumer goods. Examples include the Boeing 737-300F and the Airbus A32200F. Regional cargo planes, these planes are used for transporting cargo over shorter distances and are designed to operate in smaller airports. Examples include the ATR 72500F and the Bombardier Q400F. Helicopter cargo carriers, these are helicopters designed specifically for transporting cargo to remote or hard to reach locations. They are often used for delivering medical supplies, emergency aid, and construction equipment. Overall, the design and manufacturing process for specialized cargo aircraft has come a long way since the early days of air cargo. Today, 
cargo planes are designed to handle a wide range of cargo types and are equipped with specialized equipment to aid in loading and unloading. As global logistics continue to evolve, cargo aircraft will play an increasingly important role in ensuring that goods are delivered quickly and efficiently around the world. Large cargo planes are the workhorses of the air cargo industry, capable of transporting heavy and oversized cargo over long distances. These planes are typically used by governments, militaries, and commercial freight companies for moving cargo that cannot be transported by other means. One of the most well-known large cargo planes is the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III, which was developed for the United States Air Force, USAF, and entered service in 1995. The C-17 has a payload capacity of 170,900 pounds and can transport a range of cargo, including vehicles, heavy equipment, and supplies. Its cargo hold is 88 feet long, 18 feet wide, and 12 feet high, and it can be loaded and unloaded through a rear cargo door or a ramp. Another large cargo plane is the Lockheed Martin C-5 Galaxy, which entered service with the USAF in 1970. The C-5 has a payload capacity of 275,000 pounds and can transport a range of cargo, including tanks, helicopters, and other oversized equipment. Its cargo hold is 121 feet long, 19 feet wide, and 13.5 feet high, and it can be loaded and unloaded through a nose cargo door or a rear cargo door. Both the C-17 and the C-5 are equipped with advanced cargo handling systems that allow for efficient loading and unloading of cargo. They also have the capability to transport personnel and can be configured as medical evacuation aircraft. Large cargo planes are built with strong and durable materials, including titanium and carbon fiber, to withstand the weight and shape of heavy cargo. They are also equipped with powerful engines to provide the necessary thrust for takeoff and flight. Narrow body cargo planes are smaller than large cargo planes but are still capable of transporting a significant amount of cargo over medium distances. These planes are typically used by express package carriers and freight forwarders for transporting smaller cargo such as electronics, pharmaceuticals, and consumer goods. One of the most popular narrow-body cargo planes is the Boeing 737-300F, which is a converted passenger plane that entered service in 1988. The 737-300F has a payload capacity of around 40,000 pounds and can transport a range of cargo, including palletized goods and oversized items. Its cargo hold is 12.5 feet wide, 7 feet high and 86 feet long, and it can be loaded and unloaded through a side cargo door. Another popular narrow-body cargo plane is the Airbus A32200F, which is a converted passenger plane that entered service in 2010. The A32200F has a payload capacity of around 42,000 pounds and can transport a range of cargo, including express packages, mail, and perishable goods. Its cargo hold is 12.1 feet wide, 7 feet high, and 111 feet long, and it can be loaded and unloaded through a side cargo door. Both the 737-300F and the A32200F are equipped with specialized cargo handling systems that allow for efficient loading and unloading of cargo. They are also designed to operate in a variety of environments and weather conditions, making them ideal for transporting cargo across different regions of the world. Narrow-body cargo planes are often used for transporting cargo between regional airports or for feeding larger cargo hubs. 
They are also used for providing express delivery services for e-commerce companies and are becoming increasingly popular as online shopping continues to grow. Regional cargo planes are smaller than narrow-body cargo planes and are designed to operate in smaller airports with shorter runways. These planes are typically used by regional airlines and cargo carriers for transporting cargo over shorter distances.